Painter Stuart Ahrens shares how he gets beyond mark making. I love being out in the middle of nowhere. I love being in the desert, the mountains, the plains, whatever. I don't have any desire and interest in reproducing the landscape or reproducing nature. It's important for me to be here. I mean, my work would be different if I lived in the middle of a city, I'm sure. There's two basic approaches to painting. One is to make a painting that's a picture of something, or the other is to make a painting that is something. For whatever reason, dealing with objects, paintings that are things, seems to make more sense to me than dealing with paintings that are pictures. I try to use the traditional painting issues, color, light, space, and scale and stuff, but instead of incorporating like uh, illusional light or illusions, I'd use real objects. Instead of using implied light you know, through mixing colors, I use the real light in the space to arrive at my colors. The large installation pieces that I did early on were all about mixing color, like the pieces called The Sunny Side of the Street was all about taking the light that was in the room and the reflections off the high gloss paint and mixing colors. It was just ways of me thinking about how to use real light and real space in a gallery, you know, really deal with the architecture in a space rather than dealing with the illusional space in the context of a traditional painting. I was really, really frustrated in my studio practices for years of not uh, knowing what to paint. And not, I was trying to make a mark that would stand for a mark without being open to interpretation. And that's really, really hard to do. Anytime you put a mark on a surface, just a pencil mark on a white surface, man, you got a figure and you got a ground. There's an undefinable space there and that mark is floating in that space. And if I don't want that space, if I don't want people to say, well, what is that mark and how deep is that space? If I just want them to look at that mark, right? How do you do that without being you know, open to some kind of interpretation? That's really hard. I started out as a gestural painter, I did abstract painting, I did monochrome paintings, and the paintings over the years got smaller, the stretch bars got thicker, the oil paint got thicker, and just monochrome, very simple things, put on with a palette knife, and you still couldn't get past the idea of association. People could still look at it and say, oh, it looks like waves in the ocean, or it looks like clouds in the sky. And so I got really frustrated, and then one day, uh, there was this box on the floor of my studio, and I picked it up and I had paint mixed up on my palette and I painted it red and hung it on the wall. And I said, there it is. I said, there's absolutely no way, no way you can look at that and think that it's anything other than a box that's been painted red and stuck on the wall. And there it is. And that was the answer. And it's like, now whether somebody can come into contact with that and have some kind of meaningful experience from it is another question, but that was the start uh, for me of dealing with objects and that one box has fed the work for over 30 years. You have to find your voice. You know, you have to understand your language, you have to find your language. You have to build up a vocabulary and you have to understand how you can say whatever it is that you, you need to say. And me, for me, arriving at that red box was finding my voice. It's like all of a sudden I said, now it's like no longer a question of what I should be painting. Now, it's, now I have this, and now I can run with this. Now I can make these things. In my studio practices, my work is very direct. Okay? In other words, I'm not the kind of person who has a sketchbook full of ideas that things I'm gonna do at some point. When I determine what the support will be, whether it's like a cube made out of wood or, or an unfolded made out of aluminum or a wedge that's made out of aluminum, I start with, that, with the blank and put it on the wall and just leave it be there. At some point, the piece will 
indicate something that it needs. It will indicate to me that it needs something, a particular color, a particular shape, a stripe. And I leave it there until it indicates something else to me. And I do everything to the piece that the piece suggests to me. And sometimes they're, they work and make sense, and sometimes they don't, in which case I start over. And I guess maybe I say that they're a slow read. One of the reasons they're a slow read is it took a long time to arrive at that. If I think about the time that I'm looking at the pieces and thinking about the pieces, it's all my waking hours when I'm in the studio because the pieces are installed in such a way that from across the space, when I get up in the morning, they're the first thing that I see. And they're the last thing I see when I, when I go to bed at night and turn off the lights. My materials are very important. I studied Winslow Homer and, and uh, Turner and John Marin and all these guys and, and did most of my stuff all the way through undergraduate school in watercolors because watercolor have a, has a quality about it that uh, allows light to really live and breathe in those things. Later on I got involved in oil paints and oil paint have the ability to really uh, they're just rich. I mean, they, they have a quality of richness that you don't get anywhere else. They have, oil paint is an emulsion, right? It's like pig, the particles of pigment are floating in an emulsion. So light, actual real light, even in a traditional painting, passes through those particles and hits the white surface underneath and bounces back. So oil paintings are actually seen illuminated with, from within. And that's what gives them their real rich kind of quality. So the materials are really, really important to me. For me, the high is in the studio. When I put a mark on a surface that is meaningful to me, it blows me out. You know, it's like it, it's the reason for my, my whole existence. And hopefully, hopefully, some of that comes across on the piece when it's out in the world. It's important to me to make the work and to get as much of my own personal energy into the pieces as I can, to make them as real as I possibly can. Because when they're out in the world, right, and people have the, have the opportunity to come into contact with them, picking up on the energy that's in the work, which comes from me, is the same as touching the energy that exists in the universe. And it, it functions on a real basic human level, it connects all of us, and it lets us all know that we're connected. And so the arts, I just, I don't know, this incredible place, you know, that we can go, you know, to have that kind of experience. The only place we can go to have that kind of experience. Mm -hmm.